Okay, so this is my current laptop setup, and what I'm looking to do is just get a little holder on the bottom there, just so I've got something just to hook the keyboard out of the way when I'm working on stuff. So I've started prototyping in cardboard. I've now got something that slides on underneath, and then a little hook on the side. So the idea would be several of these across the bottom, and then some spaces for it. I also want something to hold my USB hub, so that's available. Okay, into CAD, draw the uh, main profile out, then position one point to, for the, where the holes are, pattern that out, do it both sides, put the holes in, then I'm going to finger joint the sides, the sizes are just pretty arbitrary, they are designed so that the side will only go on one way around, just try and reduce the chance of me assembling it wrong. Uh, same on the other side, could have just patterned this feature, but uh, I drew it out longhand. So there's the top plate done. Okay, moving on to the side, pattern out the finger joints, um, draw the profile, taking the dimensions just off the cardboard model, uh, round, put some round overs on just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. A um, couple of holes at the bottom, that's where the space is going to go across the, to keep the two base plots together. Decided I didn't like the round over on the back, put a chamfer in, and then just in case I copy that across, and there we go, finished uh, both sides. And now it's time to uh, look at mounting the USB hub. Okay, this is my hub. Um, unfortunately, it's got quite a odd shape to it, so it's been quite difficult to get into the CAD program. So what I've had done is I've traced it with a sharp pencil, trying to get as close as I possibly can to the edge. Then I've been able to extrapolate those edges out and get in with a pair of calipers to carefully measure what the uh, length of the side is. How well does this work? Well, I'll have to see. Um, the radiuses, I didn't know what they are. However, if you take an AA battery, they match very, very closely, very closely indeed. Um, so hopefully they're about, they're something similar. I've got them in at 14 millimeters at the moment. Okay, I'm just going to pull out a plane. Now the problem here is there's nowhere to support this next one, so it's going to have to be floating. So I'm just going to pattern a portion of that, extrude it out, draw in where the hub's going to go, dimension it, move it up. Then I'm just going to come in, draw a shape around it, just so I've got some support for it back in, put the radii in, tweak everything, then extrude it out. I'm just going to come back, add the fillets, then I'll come back in, add a little hole. That's mostly going to be for another space that's mostly for cable management, it can hook stuff over that. Up to the top, we're going to add a little bracket. These shouldn't interfere with the arm, should be small enough, and they're just there just to provide a little more support to those edges. Then up to the front, I'm just going to truss the front out, no real reason. With a laser, it, you can be as complex as you want. Then on the sides, I just think the sides look better with a little window in there, just to uh, remove the main bulk of the material. Okay, these are the prototype pieces just in cardboard from the laser. The uh, work on the hub seems to have worked out very nicely. That's a really sweet fit in there. Really nice. I couldn't really have asked for anything better. Um, some of the other bits, um, I don't think my bed's quite level, and so I've got little bits left on this one. I'm just going to quickly trim these up and glue them together just so I can get a feel for how it looks and um, how it fits. Okay, that's all put together. That looks pretty good, I think. Overall, I'm pretty happy when you slide it in. All the holes line up, which is one of the things I was worried about. So this is what I'm going to make it from. This is just 6mm MDF, which I've painted with a bit of leftover emulsion. It's a kitchen emulsion, so it's relatively touch-proof. I need to finish masking it, because when you run the laser, it kind of smuts everything up, um, covers stuff in soot and uh, boiled wood. Um, the top's going to be done just in ordinary plain MDF and I'll just quickly hit that with a, with some uh, black rattle can just to uh, camouflage it under the um, re the laptop tray which is already black. So here it is in wood. It looks nice. Fits. Good. Takes the keyboard. So next thing Go and get these into paint. Gonna just mask the edges off for the glue joints. Um, the ones that have already been painted, I'm probably just gonna have to touch with the sander. 
Uh, they'll be on the inside anyway, so if I do smudge them a little, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, and then it's going to be onto the standoffs in the middle. Okay, so I'm making the spaces out of this relatively thick wall aluminium tube. Um, just going to face the ends off on the lathe. I've cut them to length with a, just a hacksaw. Facing them off means that both you get a really nice finish and it also means they'll be nice and parallel, which means when I stack up the plates, they'll all be evenly spaced. There's four short ones, two on each side, and three relatively long ones in the middle that just sit where the hub is. This means that I just don't crush the hub when I start tramping up onto it. So to get a nice finish on them, they've come with an extruded finish. I'm just using a bit of 180 grit just to give them a nice brushed finish in the lathe. We've got newspaper down and tape on the collet to try and stop them getting grit anywhere. And as you can see, it gives them just that nicer finish. So the next thing I need is something just to take up this space. So just dropping into CAD, draw a quick cylinder, add a little flute around it, pattern that out, a chamfer to make it go in easier, and then 3D print them off. In order to space the studs in the tubes, I've printed off some spacers. Beauty of this is although it's a bit complex I can let the 3D printer do it while I do something else. However I've mucked up the design and as such they're too big. The little crush, I've designed them to have these little crush wings on the side but they really do not want to fit. Mm. <sighs> yeah. No good. Um, I've tried trimming the wings down a bit, as you can see by all the swarf, um, but they still don't want to go in particularly central. Um, and also the bores tend to contract as well. High in sight, I probably should have just uh, just gone for making spacers, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, I've considered normally I just wrap the um, wrap the studding in tape, but because it's going together the way it is, it's going to be difficult to do that and actually slide on the uh, spacers down the studding. So what I've got is the only bit of um, relatively small diameter synthetic stuff I've got is this piece of acrylic rod. So I'm going to try turning some spacers now and hopefully that will be good enough. Okay, face the end off, centre drill. I need to just come back at the facing because it, that centre drill pushed up a small burr, then in with the tailstock and we can start turning. Now, acrylics kind of does building up these long chips when you're taking quite a deep cut, but luckily it's quite brittle, it breaks up the paint brush. Okay. Final cut on the power feed. A little late on pressing the stop button there. Look at that surface finish. Absolutely fantastic. Quick check with the uh, guesser meters. It's not a really a precision part, so it's just a rough check to check them somewhere near. Um, also, again, because it's not a precision part, the uh, turning tool I'm using can't get in for the tail stock on a small diameter, so I'm just using a file here just to remove that initial bit. And it fits. So, into drilling. So, uh, one of the problems with acrylic is it's prone to melting under a lot of heat, under heat, and particularly from drilling. If you're drilling a lot, you'll find you can get melt, and that can actually break drills. Usually, if I'm working on a flat piece, I like to use just like a little puddle of water, which keeps it cool. However, on the lathe, I don't have flood coolant. I'm not sure whether the oil in the coolant would react with the acrylic or not. Um, so, I've just been pet drilling, but I've gradually been getting more confident. This is the second one of these I was making. There it is, just got to uh, cut that to length. And carefully install it with a little drop of super glue into the end of the uh, end of the standoffs. Okay, so final assembly. I've already glued together the finger joints. Now it's just a matter of threading the standoffs on. Going in nicely. And then I decided to clamp up the finger joints. Okay, so. Just started trying to clamp it up. 
trying to get everything clamped so I've got a good tight glue joint and I've just overstressed the main bottom member. It's just crumpled. So I'm going to see whether it's actually vaguely repairable, whether I can get some glue in there and uh, see if I can salvage this. So I've taken the clamps off and I think I can get away with it. I'm just going to let everything just set up as is, unclamped. It looks like all the joints are nice and tight, or tight enough. Just see what we end up with. So here it is finished. Seems to have worked out fairly well. Um, keyboard fits nicely into place, slides out easily. I actually quite like the fact it's got like a secondary catch, it means you're less able to fumble it. Um, yeah, worked really nice. Got the um, USB hub easily accessible on the front if I want to do something. So there's an Arduino. I'm just plug straight in. Excellent. The damage to the, from the clamping doesn't seem to have been a major problem. All the vent holes are still open, clear. Yeah, overall, very happy with how it came out.